Hey everybody, welcome back to Alfred's Basic Adult Piano Course, Lesson Book Level 1. This is Lesson 52, and we're going to cover page 59 in our book, the song Café Vienna. So uh, Café Vienna, you notice right away, is in 3-4 time, and it says above that, moderate waltz tempo. So we're dealing with a waltz here. But most of our work that's going to go into this piece is going to be in the right hand. Underneath the title, it says a couple things. Play hands separately at first, then together. And we're gonna do that in just a second, starting with the right hand. And it says, be especially careful of the right hand fingering. Yes, this is gonna be very important as well. And they even tell us, notice that the first two notes, which in this case are E and middle C, it is a third, a melodic third. They're played with two and one. So right off the bat, you're not in your C position anymore, but rather this position. And that puts thumb on middle C, two on E, three on F, four on G, and five on A. And we're gonna expand a little bit beyond that by going up to this B. So let's start with just the right hand notes. So, um, like I said, two on E, thumb on middle C. And for middle C, you're gonna come up a fifth, but that fifth, which is G, is gonna be played with your fourth finger twice. And the second measure has a similar pattern, two on E, thumb on C, but now you're gonna go up to A with your fifth finger twice. Once again on the third measure, two on E, thumb on middle C, and we're gonna go, we're gonna go up a seventh to B with our fifth finger, and you're basically gonna move your hand over. And that puts four on A for the next note. And our last measure is three on G. At the end of the last measure, you're gonna play D and F with thumb and second finger, harmonically together twice. Notice it's a harmonic third, but you're using one and two for your fingers. Now stay right there because on the second line, you're gonna play that F with your second finger all by itself, and that D with your thumb all by itself, and you're gonna come up to B, your fifth finger should, should still be on B. That puts four on A. Next measure, three on G. Once again, one and two on D and F. And stay right there, you're gonna play F on the third measure with two, thumb on D, back up to B, still the fifth finger, four on A, last measure, three on G, and bring your thumb slightly up to this E. And once again. Now, transitioning to the third line, that's still an E, but notice it's with the second finger. We've got our thumb on that E, so bring your second finger. And actually, this is the beginning of the piece all over again. In fact, the third line is exactly the same as the first line. So that's two on E, thumb on C, four on G, next measure, E, C, A, A, next measure, E, C, up to B, four on A, three on G for the last measure, and again, that one and two on D and F. Stay there on the bottom line for two on F, thumb on D, five on B, four on A, second measure, three on G, Again, one and two on D and F. Now our third measure, here's a big transition with the fingering. My fifth finger is approximately around the B. I've got to bring it down to G. And I'm actually going to go into my middle C position right here because I'm playing G, F, E, D, and the last measure is middle C. So I just walk that down. Five, four, three, two, one, and then a big octave jump to that C. And we're going to hold it there for a little bit because we got a fermata. So I just went over all the notes and the fingering, but I did not cover the rhythms. Most of the rhythms in the right hand are pretty much the same, just like that first measure, two eighth notes followed by two quarter notes. So that first measure, the rhythm goes like this. Remember, we're in three, four, and we've got eighth notes. So one and two and three and is our counting. So going very slowly, it's one and two, and three, and. So it's really care, you gotta be really careful not to rush those quarter notes. It's so easy to just. 
once you've learned the notes, of course, it's easy to just do that. So again, full counts, two and, three and on those quarter notes. One and, two and, three and. Next measure, one and, two and, three and. Next measure, one and, two and, three and. Now it's all quarter notes, one and, two and, three and. So rhythmically speaking, we've just covered all the rhythms in the right hand except for the final measure. Look at the second line. The first measure is two eighth notes, two quarter notes. Uh, the second measure is just quarter notes. And again, when you have quarter notes, that's actually gonna be the hardest thing because you're gonna be tempted to rush those. So that second measure on the second line, just remember one and, two and, three and. Count it out. And if you continue to look through the rest of the second line, the third line, and the fourth line, each measure is one of those two rhythms. You've either got two eighth notes followed by two quarter notes or a measure of just quarter notes. Our last measure at the very bottom where we had the octave, one and, and it's a half note, but you're gonna hold it longer than two beats because of the fermata. And of course you have the ritardando in the measure before that, so you're slowing down. One and, two and, three, and, one, and. The other thing is you've got pedal in the last measure. Since it's so little pedal in this piece, I'm not gonna show you, but just re remember that when you use pedal, it's the damper pedal, the far right, if you're on a piano. If you're on a keyboard, it's probably your only pedal. Um, but all they're doing is they're having you hold down the pedal so that when you jump up the octave, you can still hear that middle C, okay? Now, for some of us, we could be like, you can do that. True, but um, some, not everyone can reach the octave easily at this point, so the pedal's there to assist in that. And of course, you got your left hand too, which we'll get to in a little bit. So the important thing about the right hand, um, before even the rhythms, is fingering on these notes. Um, and there's a pattern. You know, the first three measures, uh, basically you're doing this um, pattern of from middle C to G, a fifth. Next measure is middle C to A, a sixth. And the third measure from middle C up a seventh. So this carries, carries on a little bit from the previous lesson on page 58, measuring sevenths and octaves. Now we get to play... Uh, just a couple of uh, measures that have sevenths and, again, an octave at the very end of the piece. So, a lot of intervals in this piece, but the fingering doesn't match up with them. Again, two and one at the beginning instead of three and one. So, fingering and notes in the right hand is key. Once you've got that down, then apply the rhythms. Uh, let's look at the left hand. The left hand by itself is really easy. It's our waltz pattern. Quarter notes is all it is, except for the very end. And it's just two chords in the entire piece. The first measure is a C chord. So actually your left hand is gonna be in the C position. Standard, good old C position. Um, but notice it's a broken chord, right? C is on beat one, and then E and G on beat two, and again on three. A very typical waltz pattern. This is your first three measures. Then in the fourth measure, we have a G7 chord, B, F, and G. But again, broken because of our waltz pattern. B on beat one, F and G on two and three. That carries through the second line. Measure two, measure three, and then on measure four, we're back to our C chord. Down in our third line, which is the same as the first line. So the last measure right here, G7, bottom line, G7, we're going to stay there, and then of course slowing down on the retardando, and the last measure with pedal is C, and then that E and G, and you're just going to hold it. And you can actually release and let the pedal still hold. The pedal isn't working too well today, I've noticed, in these notes, so got to get that fixed. Um, 
Uh, by itself, left hand is super easy. That, of course, we all know at this point when we put the hands together, it doesn't feel so easy. But um, when you go through and put hands together, if I haven't mentioned this before, vertical reading. Okay, so when you play hands separately and, and really the way music goes on the page, the way it flows is horizontally. You know, we're starting at the beginning of the page and just reading through this direction. The music flows horizontally. But when you're putting hands together, I recommend looking at it vertically because we're starting to line up everything. So before you even play your first notes, make sure your hand positions are good. Left hand, C position. Right hand, I call it a modified C position. Thumb on C, but twos on E, and then three, four, and five. Make sure your hands are in good position. Vertical reading means everything together on beat one. I'm gonna line up C in the left hand and E in the right hand and then play it together. Okay, and I'm gonna take this out of rhythm too. I'm not even gonna count. I'm just gonna line up everything vertically. So make sure C and E are together. What's the next thing that you play? C in the right hand. Now keep your left hand down because you gotta hold it for a full beat. We're still on beat one. And then you're gonna line up everything on beat two and call it out if you have to. G, uh, e and G in the left hand, G in the right hand. Have your fingers ready and then play. You don't wanna just rush into it and see if you get lucky. Line up everything and then play. And of course it repeats on beat three. And then the next measure, we're back to C and E together. Middle C in the right hand by itself. It's almost the same as measure one, except A now on beat two. And again, right there on beat three. Measure three, it starts the same once again. C and E, middle C. But then now we go up to B in the right hand. And then it changes on beat three to A on the right hand. Now here's the big change, the last measure. That's where you go down to B in the left hand, third finger on G in the right hand. And this is especially hard too. F and G on beat two in the left hand, D and F, and mind your fingering, one and two in the right hand. Now it's one and two with fingers in both hands, that's cool. But look at my intervals, a second in the left hand, a third in the right hand. So that feels a little different. You might need to practice that a few times, just going from here on beat one to here on beat two, just back and forth. Going on to measure uh, five, second line, don't go anywhere. You're still on a B in the left hand. You're still on two on F in the right hand. And then D's by itself. Okay. Now, beat two, you're back to F and G. So you're on the G7 chord now for a while in the left hand. B in the right hand. Moves down to A on beat three. G in the right hand on beat one for the next measure. Down to B in the left hand. And then just like the end of the first line, you've got F and G on beat two in the left hand. One and two on D and F in the right hand. Line it up and then make sure you hit it together. Same thing on beat three. Stay right there for the third measure in the right hand. Move down to B in the left hand. So you got B and F, G's by itself. B in the right hand, F and G in the left hand. Moving to A in the right hand. Be careful in this last measure, your left hand's going to the C chord. So move your pinky to C. Third finger should be on G. Make sure they're lined up. And then E and G on beat two in the left hand, thumb on E in the right hand. Same thing for beat three. Now, third line, tricky. You're gonna stay on C with your pinky in the left hand, but you gotta move that second finger to the E. Thumb's on it right now, but you gotta move two. Line it up and then play. Now, what did we say earlier about the third line? Same thing as the first line. It's the exact same thing. So once you've learned the first line, you've learned this third line. Nothing changes between the first and third line. The only thing that changes is the transition of getting into that third line from your second line. Now, actually, going into your fourth line is like going into the second line. B 
in the left hand now, right? Because I've switched to the G7 chord on that last measure on the third line. Two on F in the right hand. Thumb on D. F and G in the left hand, B in the right hand. Moves to A in the right hand. Next measure, G in the right hand, down to B in the left hand. And remember, this is the second and the third. Second in the left hand, third in the right hand. Intervals. Beats two and three. You're still on B in the third measure, but look at your right hand. Big change we talked about earlier. Five comes over to G. Line it up and then play it. Followed by F. Now both hands together here on beat two. Remember you're walking down the right hand one note at a time on our last measure with pedal. Hold down your pedal as you jump the octave in the right hand, E and G in the left hand together. Like I said, you can even lift the hand and let the pedal do the rest for you. But that's tricky in the right hand. Um, well, both hands together actually on the bottom line, last two measures. The right hand by itself is easy. We love just walking down at this point. But your left hand, obviously doing something very different. Vertical reading right here is especially important. Line up everything. B and G. F's by itself. Just keep walking down in that right hand. Think about where you're going in that left hand, F and G. Stay there for the next beat, but you gotta move to D. And then it's kind of like home base, C's. So, you know, you probably are very aware at this point, after going through all these lessons, that hand separate, piece of cake. Put them together, whole new ball game. It's almost like starting all over again in a way. So my advice is, you know, obviously get the right hand. You got to play the right hand by itself first. Um, you got to know the right hand by itself. If you're struggling with the right hand by itself, there's no way we're going to get hands together. If you do, you're lucky. And remember, we don't want to get lucky. We want to know this material. We want to be solid. Not worried about the left hand. Left hand by itself, super easy. But once you've gotten the right hand and left hand um, comfortable by themselves, stick to putting them together. If you put them together and say, ah, this is too hard, let me go back. No, don't go back. You can already do it by themselves. That's a waste of time. You got to just stay in there. Vertical reading, chop it up, slow it down. That's the way to do it. Now, once that's done, and it'll take some time, this is what your piece is gonna sound like. So let me uh, give you a little count off. I'm not gonna go too fast, but here's the idea. One, and, two, and, three, and. go a little bit faster than that too of course it can really really go at any tempo you want as long as it's played accurately and smoothly um you'll notice that i added the dynamics when i played it i recommend you do not do these dynamics when you do hands separate get the hands together get them together well the dynamics here should be the last thing because of the type of dynamics you've got a gradual crescendo through the entire first and third line you're starting soft your ending forte. Now here's a little trick that happens to work in this situation. If you're having an issue with gradual, you know, uh, crescendos, the first measure is marked soft. Make the second measure mezzo piano. Make the third measure mezzo forte, and then your last measure is forte. So you can break it up in sections like that, and the overall crescendo will still come through. Rather than saying, I don't know how loud to I may not get loud enough or I may get too loud, you know, which, you know, those are things you got to consider with a crescendo. Don't get too loud too soon. Don't, or you need to get louder because you're still too soft. 
But if you go soft, mezzo piano, uh, piano, mezzo piano, mezzo forte, and forte on those four measures, that will you know guide you, I think, a little bit more. The second and fourth measure are mezzo forte. So the way that works is I just back down sl uh, slightly in volume from the forte that I was at. But that's it as far as dynamics. Um, but those crescendos are not easy. You got to know both hands really well at that point. You can't be thinking about notes or fingering anymore. So it'll probably take a little bit of time to get to that point. Now, the other thing you can do, uh, which I've mentioned in several videos, if you want to, this just takes your music to the next level. Keep that left hand soft, almost like a light staccato. Now I'm playing it pretty fast. And play your right hand louder above it. Easier said than done, of course. So I actually applied the crescendo in this case and all those dynamics to the right hand. Why? Because that's the melody. We want that to sing. We want that to be heard. It's more movement. The left hand's accompaniment, it's... Now, it's not that you can't get louder there. You can. But if you do it more in the right hand, I think, personally, it'll just make that aspect of the music that much nicer. So... Um, it's basically being light with one hand, being a little bit heavier, smoother with the other, you know? And if you're wondering, why haven't you really taught more about this? Because I'm interested in this. Yeah, you're right. Maybe I'll do a video just on that technique. Um, but for now, it boils down to this. Take two notes, the beginning two notes of the piece. In the right hand, you're heavier. You actually don't even worry about dynamics. Do this just, just whatever volume, forte. Punch the right hand, sink in, do the opposite with the left hand. You're light and you're kind of coming off the note early. So you're light with one hand, you're heavy with one hand, the other hand. If you're away from the piano, it's like heavy and light. You're bouncing off with your left hand. You're light with it, but your right hand sinks in but they gotta hit at the same time. That's the key. It can't be this. That's not gonna work, because when I transfer it down here, now it's all choppy, so. But that's what it boils down to. It's not about learning the piece of music that way, it's about learning this concept. Training one to be heavy, one to be light. And that's where I would start, just with that simple exercise right there. And once you got that down, just take it a little further. Heavy and heavy again in the right hand. Stay heavy in the right hand, but light in the left hand. Again, when you're focused on that, you can't even focus on notes anymore or dynamics or fingering or anything. That has to be like memorized. But you can do that with any notes on the piano. I could take C's with, you know, whatever fingers and still practice that concept. So that will take your music to the next level. Do you have to do it at this point? Absolutely not. The books don't require it. Now, eventually, um, they may get into it more, but that's just for someone who's ambitious and this music's, you know, coming pretty easy for. Take it to the next level. You will become a much, much more accomplished musician. And again, if you're not there yet, don't worry about it. It'll come. It'll come. Just playing this piece of music is plenty right now. All right, so um, I hope that, uh, I hope, I well, I wish all the best as you learn this piece, Cafe Vienna. If you have any questions, comments, as always, leave them in the section below and I will do my best to answer. And once again, can't wait to see you guys in the next lesson.